The sporting spotlight shines on racing this autumn, whether it's Mooney Valley or Mornington, Rose Hill or Randwick. Betfair has you covered with a range of markets. At Betfair, winners are welcome. So play your way on Betfair this autumn. Gamble responsibly. If gambling becomes an issue, call 1-800-858-858. Right. Uh, we're crossing the fingers that Dean Evans from Winning Edge Investments is there. Morning to you, Dean. Good morning, Andrew. How are you? I'm very well indeed. Uh, Andrew Hawkins to join us in just a tick. But, Dean, what an attractive Saturday, particularly Melbourne, knowing that Melbourne's got clear weather, a good four, bring on the new market, particularly down the straight. Yeah, look, it's always a really intriguing, fantastic race, the new market. Great to see a, a massive field uh, of uh, 17 runners. Uh, really interesting field too. And, and like you say, just, just nice to have perfect weather there, which is surprising when you see what's happening in the, in the likes of New South Wales and, and Queensland, but it's uh, absolutely perfect at Flemington. Yeah, it is. Uh, and, and, and fine weather through. So it will be very suitable for Saturday. Uh, at least Sydney, Dean, is going to get a gap of a few days. If the forecast is right, there's nothing significant on the rain front. So we know that these tracks can improve. Yeah, they can. The, the really top quality, you know, Saturday Metro tracks now in New South Wales and, and, and Victoria, are, you know, the drainage is, is proving to be exceptional. Um, and despite the, the biblical rains that we've had in, in Sydney and, and the sort of heavy 10 at the moment at Rose Hill, you know, it could end up being a, a sort of heavy 8 or a, a slow 7, I think, with all this good weather and, and, and race really well. OK, we reckon we've got Andrew Hawkins online too. He's working for the Victoria Racing Club and he joins us. Welcome, Andrew. Great to be with you, Andrew. Fantastic uh, day of racing at Flemington uh, to, I think it's the final Super Saturday because we know that next year the Australian Cup is going to be transferred. There'll be a bit of movement around, but how good is this new market handicap? Oh, it's a fantastic new market handicap. I mean, there's always horses that you wish could have lined up, uh, horses like Moravi or uh, horses like Away Game coming out of the Oakley Plate. But I think really it's as good a new market handicap as I've seen. It's certainly one of the most competitive new market handicaps I've seen. And you can make a case for every runner from uh, uh, home affairs at the top of the market right down to, to those at the bottom of the weights. Right. Okay. So... We're both on, you're both on the one line. So just be aware uh, if one person is talking, if I can put it across that way. So Dean, in regard to your thoughts, the, uh, the Thursday morning thoughts of the Newmarket Handicap, how do you see the race being run? Oh, look, it'll be a, it'll be a quick speed. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a fair bit of tempo here. The likes of Home Affairs, Snap Dancer, uh, The Astrologist, Finance Tycoon, Oxley Road, uh, and then Lost and Running probably just sitting off them. You know, there's a fair bit of speed, but what's been interesting uh, and probably surprising with a, you know, in a race that's a 1,200-metre race down the straight with a big field, um, eight of the last 10 winners have settled in the first four. Uh, yeah, eight of the last 10 uh, winners have settled in the first four and running. So um, it, it's a race that actually, uh, you know, is dominated by those sort of speed horses that can, that can do it tough um, and, and uh, from the front. Where, with Home Affairs drawing the grandstand side and the horses that are around it, uh, Dean, where do you think? Do you think Home Affairs is capable of taking it up with 56 kilo high pressure Group One like it, like the Lightning? Okay, we seem to have lost Dean there. We'll just, uh, Andrew, I'll pose you the same question. Where do you think Home Affairs gets to? Uh, I think it makes sense that Home Affairs is going to get out uh, towards the lead, especially given he's drawn 16. I think, um, obviously, it's always one of those interesting questions where do they end up in a in a new market? Do they do they split? Do they do they come down the the stand side? Uh, we saw them the other day in a race like the English Sprint and also the uh, the the Hoisted, where they they sort of developed up the centre and were still scooping. Um, but I reckon Home Affairs from 16 probably goes towards the outside rail, probably ends up. Uh, taking it up, but there is there is enough speed there um, that you could see, you know, a horse like Finance Tycoon from five going forward. Um, but it does look a race where I think um, you'll see you'll see Home Affairs, uh, if not on the lead, then right there uh, in the firing line. Do you have the same opinion, Dean, that uh, it's probably going to be Grandstand leader? Uh, yeah, I think so. You know, a lot of that speed there is, is sort of drawn out wide. The like of, likes of uh, of Home Affairs and and Oxley Road uh, and Snap Dancer. So I think they'll go and it'll 
it'll just depend how the how the track plays. You know, it's it's, it's mm. certainly usually the, the fairest track, but uh, you know, I, I think the likes of sort of Zutori and that that trifecta last year, um, there was a bias towards the, the rails, and I think it, it turned out that the rail side was um, uh, the quicker side. So, you know, we'll we'll get a chance to see uh, a couple of. Um, you know, down the straight races and race one and race three beforehand, just to get a line on whether there's, uh, you know, there's any advantage on one side or the other. Dean, there's uh, there's a mixture of horses here that we know, but there's Rock and Horse and also Levante from New Zealand that you, we can only watch their races. How do you rate Levante uh, coming from winning a Group One over there? Yeah, Levante is is very very good. I um, I've been uh, tweeting about this horse actually from from very early on in its career. Uh, it, it, it's sort of uh, proven itself with very strong sectionals from the start. I've, I've been hoping they bring this horse over to Australia for a long time because she is one of the better better mares that I've seen, uh, you know, head over this way for a long time. Um, whether this is the most suitable race for her is actually my question. I think, uh, uh, you know, I would have liked to have seen her perhaps in a, in a Coolmore Classic in Sydney. Um, I think she's even better over 1,400 and, and, and ultimately probably over a mile. Um, but uh, you know she's definitely going to make the grade here at Group One level, and, and, and she's a good good price. So I think um, uh, she's one people want to look out for because she's got a very powerful finish. Uh, she's very consistent, um, and and uh, you know she's she's certainly up to these. Um, and the other the other Kiwi horse, uh, Rock and Rock and Horse, yeah. only got beaten nose by her uh, at Trentham, which is a, a reasonably straight twelve hundred meters. Uh, there's only, only sort of one turn, so. Um, you know, on on that mark, then uh, you know he, he's got to be considered as um, as capable of mixing it with these also. So, Dean, to get your view, and then I'll get uh, Andrews your overview of a new market. Does Home Affairs win it? Just off what we've seen, the ratings say that it uh, it's the highest rated horse in the race at one hundred and seventeen. What's your what's your thinking? Oh, look, you know, he was super impressive in the Coolmore and then, you know, did a great job on the Lightning too. I think, you know, for me, the, the big challenge is the, the 56 kgs. That is a, a big weight for a three-year-old. Um, you know, Weekend Hustler did it, but most of the other three-year-olds, uh, you know, it carries sort of between 50 and, and 52. Um, I think it does present opportunities. Uh, the horse, I think, is the best value is Mars Crusader. That's a, you know, he's a Group 1 winning sprinter and second in the Everest and TJ Smith to Nature Strip and Nature Strip isn't here. I thought he was good enough in the Lightning, beaten three and a half lengths over an unsuitable thousand metres, um, and over twelve hundred metres, he's, he's much better suited here. And I'm I'm just surprised a horse like that's thirteen dollars. Yeah. Uh, you know, lost and running, we, we spoke spoke about as one of the the autumn horses to follow, um, and there's been plenty of winners come out of that. And and you know, I think he's I think he's going to be top of the tree in the in the future. Um, his first up win was very impressive, and, and I think he rates as a really strong chance as well. Um, and I do think, uh, you know, SWAT stats weighted with a four and a half kg turnaround to home affairs off a, off a length and a half defeat. And Levante, we mentioned, and probably Artorius is the other one who, um, you know, ran the quickest last 600 of the day first up. And, and I think the 1200 down the straight is going to suit him too. Now, there's a mixture there. One, three, 14, six and 16. And obviously uh, home affairs you mentioned, but uh, with Mars Crusader right now, $13.00. And 370, the place has been forgotten. I know it's got to carry 57, but geez, it can finish really hard. Now, Andrew, as I come to you, I've got to ask you what sort of dog in the background there is? Is it biting your leg off? He's going absolutely nuts. He's a mini dachshund, and uh, currently he's got his uh, zoomy period. He's running around like an, like uh, uh, oh, like anything. He's just got uh, you know he could probably he could probably match home affairs down the straight at the moment the way he's running around. You need to get him out there and get him amongst it. I reckon by the sounds of, <laughs> some of the sounds we're getting back. Uh, so 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 who do you think wins the new market? Um, oh, look, this is a this is such an open race. Um, I, I think that I agree with Dean about Levante. I think uh, she's a filly who is one of the best they've brought over in some time. Um, but what's been really interesting with her is she's always been a, a, a filly that's got back in her races, has shown incredible late speed, some sectionals that she's reeled off have been have been absolutely phenomenal. But at her last two, when she's been able to win Group 1, she's been able to settle that a little bit closer. Uh, she's jumped away from the gates well. Um, it's dull her sprint, but it's also given her that tactical advantage as she's able to take, uh, take full uh, advantage of that and be able to... Uh, prevail at the line. So I think I think uh, I wouldn't expect her to be too far away. Um, I think Ken Tolso has said that 
um, you know, the new market's more of a reconnaissance mission. They're trying to bring her over for this just to get her used to Australia. Um, ultimately, they want to get her to the Empire Rose in the autumn and I think in, in the spring. And I think the Empire Rose is going to be the right race for her. I think Miles, uh, a mile against the Phillies and Mares is going to be absolutely up her alley. Um, but I think she can run a big race here. So Levante, for me, would probably be the one uh, with Mars Crusader, who I agree has been completely forgotten. Um, that lightning run... I thought was quite good. Um, I think he he finished off very well, and I don't think you could say he didn't handle the straight. I think uh, this race, which will probably be run at that uh, slightly more sedate tempo, will allow him to be within uh, within distance to be able to strike. Uh, I think he'll be right there. Um, I, th- I think that uh, you know, aside from those two, there's there really are so many different ways you can go. Home affairs, I'm a bit of a query at that weight. Um, probably the three-year-olds, I would prefer Artorias, although um, obviously Artorias not the most uh, prolific of winners, but uh, the way he finished off in the Rubicon was good. Um, you know, uh, we've seen Oxley Road obviously come out and run well in an, in a, an Oakley plate. And if there's one that's going to run a, a race at a big price, um, I know he's been highly touted so many times. I've actually had uh, I've had an argument about this uh, with your producer, Dan, uh, Andrew, but it's uh, Poland, I think, that can run, run an okay race. Um, you know, ran well enough in the Oakley Plate, which was never the right race for him. Um, his jump out before that down the straight was really, really good, splitting home affairs and nature strip. Um, he's drawn on that right side. He's drawn 14 where that speed's going to be going to be there. He'll probably settle in midfield uh, there behind. If the splits come his way, I reckon Poland can run can run a pretty big race. So he'd be my my one at odds. But uh, for me, Levante is the way I'll be going. Okay, Levante at the moment twenty three dollars and five fifty the place at Bet three six five, and uh, Poland's eighty one and seventeen the place. So that's the boys' thoughts around the new market. The Australian Cup is the other feature, Dean, where we see think it over. Uh, Going to Melbourne simply because of that good track. Uh, he he he's run the other day on the heavy wasn't too bad, but he just gets the right conditions here, doesn't he? Yeah, that's right. I, I thought his run uh, um, last start was was just exceptional because the horse just doesn't handle the wet as well uh, at all. And 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 from a career perspective, that was his best sort of heavy track run by a long, long way. He's only beaten one point three lengths uh, and only won the Apollo by three lengths. It just tells us he's flying. He just keeps getting better. Kerry Park is doing an amazing job, um, and you know this. This horse has now earned well over three million dollars, um, and he is the, the the one to beat here, I think. Um, but you know he's got to uh, he's just got to run at Flemington for the for the first time. But it's, it's hard to see that being an issue, and he gets the dry track that he wants. So uh, you know he's certainly um, he's certainly one that they're going to have to run down. I think what's interesting about this race: nine of the last ten winners have come out of the, the Peter Young Stakes. Uh, which is quite an important pointer. Mm. Uh, and so the horse that I think is just uh, a surprising price, really, is, is Cascadian. You know, he's, he's won the key lead up for this race. He was second in the McKinnon um, at his last run in the spring. Tazaki, I mean, that form's really as, as good as anything, and he was, he, was, he was well ahead of the rest of the field. He just seems to be racing a career best form, he's take, taken that leap from a sort of miler handicap horse uh, to, you know, a wait for age horse who, who can now get uh, a bit further. And I think um, you know, I, th- I think he's one who can certainly give uh, Think It Over a real scare. Uh, at the moment, Think It Over is at $3. Uh, and as you mentioned, Cascadia and $8.50. Ollie jumping aboard there for a course proper gallop on Tuesday morning. Uh, just in regard to how you see the race being run, Dean, uh, I mean, Think It Over has been able just to get those perfect runs just off the pace. Is there a lot of it, or do you think it's just going to be a steady 2,000? I think it's just going to be steady. You know, call sign Mav uh, and probably Delphi will push forward. Steel Prince will push forward as well, um, and they'll be up front. Maximal, I'd say, will sort of be in in that 1-1 spot, and then uh, you'll have sort of Think It Over just settling sort of perfectly, I'd say, in sort of fifth with, uh, with Yonkers there, and the rest of them probably... Get it, get a bit back. So I think it'll be a steady tempo. Um, I think that'll that'll help think it over because uh, I don't think there's much in front of him that he needs to run past. So it'll be really him fending off the challenges. I think of of Cascadian and, and Spanish Mission, who is obviously uh, you know has some incredible form lines from overseas. Was outstanding in the Melbourne Cup third off a bit of an interrupted prep, and uh, you know he was good good first up in the in the Carlian Cup, and is is probably the other you know high quality horse in the race. 
Two, one and three there. A few uh, that Dean's mentioned. What about your thoughts, Andrew Hawkins, on the Australian Cup? I'm so glad to see him get over down. I think it's uh, really good to get the opportunity to see him at Flemington and, and racing well. Um, you know, he's, he's getting that good track, which I think is going to help. Um, doesn't appear to be much speed. Nash, we know how good he is at uh, rating these sorts of horses. Um, I mean, Thicket Over is the one to beat. But uh, Cascadian, um, as Dean said, you know, really good run in the McKinnon. Um, you know, he's due a win at Flemington. When you consider, um, mm. you know, he was beaten a length and a quarter in the in the McKinnon. But then his three runs before that were all in uh, the Cantala Stakes the last three years. And he was beaten, what, uh, uh, you know, a, a head by uh, Yulong Prince in 2020. He was beaten... Uh, he was beaten ahead this year by a super storm and uh, you go back to 2019 and he was beaten um, beaten a neck by a fierce impact. I mean, he's, he's due a Flemington win. Now, whether it comes this week in the Australian Cup or, or next week in the All-Star Mile, um, I'm sure he's going to be around the mark. It's just about uh, how close he can finish. Um, but look, it's, it's a race that brings together all these different form lines. Um, I mean, Jewess... You know, everyone saw how uh, good she was in the Chipping Norton. She's probably not at her best on a heavy track. The problem is she does seem to really mix her form. And and when you look at the last time or the last two times she's uh, been up against Stick It Over, um, she just really hasn't been able to make a mark. So um, it depends which Jewess we see. Um, But obviously on last time, she'd have to be a contender. Um, it is an open race. I think there's, uh, you take Think It Over out and and really there's uh, any number of ways you can go. Call sign Mav was really, really good last time um, in that Carline Cup. Missed the run in the, uh, in the uh, Peter Young. But uh, interesting story there because uh, uh, among his owners is Stephen Baster. And uh, Stephen Baster actually was first past the post in a uh, Australian Cup on Awesome Rock. Lost it on protest. Uh, to preferment, now trying to win it as an owner. So good luck to mm. Stephen Bassett there. It'd be a great story to see Call Sign Mav, the uh, former Kiwi, come over and uh, and win. But for me, it's uh, Think It Over's race to lose. Think It Over there, as I told you, is currently at $3. A big day for the Victoria Racing Club. I know you're going to be there trackside. Andrew, thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me, Andrew. Good on you. Andrew Hawkins there. Uh, Dean, just one final one. Time is on the wing a little bit. But can I ask you about She's Ideal? Uh, we know how good she was with uh, Very Elegant. What's your thinking about the Australian Cup? Um, no mare has won it in the last 10 years from 23 starters. Um, she's sort of coming from that that Sydney run, which, again, is not the usual lead-up. Uh, she was certainly very impressive in Chipping Norton uh, with, with her second placing, and, and she seems to, for a stayer, be able to, pull out those good runs you know she ran third first up on the winks stakes group one last prep as well so uh she can pull out those early runs uh my concern she's going to get a fair way back as well so i've sort of uh i consider her a place chance um but i think she's going to struggle to to beat some of the you know the, the top three in the handicaps so. remarkably liam o'keefe the track manager at flemington has said uh, they've put six mil of water irrigation last night so the track is a good four uh, remarkably watering in Melbourne. Uh, Sydney, the Coolmore Classics, the big group one, uh, talking with Dean Evans from Winning Edge Investments. Treat betting like a business. Gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-858-858. We know that there's been key decisions here by the Waller Stable, particularly, and also Anthony Cummings. So what's your overview of the Classic? Yeah, look, it's an interesting race. Would you believe in the in the last 10 years, uh, only one horse has won it at single-figure odds uh, at $8. Um, cool. The last seven winners have all SP'd at $14 plus. Um, you know, it's a, it's a race that, that generally, uh, you know, throws up a, a big price winner. Um, all the last 10 years, winners have been second or third up off sort of a, a two- or three-week break. Um, inside barriers are a big advantage at Rose Hill, and they certainly are in, in this race. There should be a solid tempo here. You know, x and, and Vangelic like to be up front. Uh, and you got the likes of Yes Baby Yes, Capistel, Hinge, Shout the Bar, and, and Mirror Vision who all sort of like to be to be positive. Um, it's a you know it's an interesting race. Uh, the, the horse that I think is is just an enormous price, and I just can't understand it was is Vangelic. Uh, was a really unlucky fourth in this race last year as a three year old filly. Probably probably should have won. I think I mean, she then came to Rose Hill last bit, won the Group Two Golden Pendant, ran a close third in the Golden Eagle. Um, you know, she was a good, good run first up on the bog, 
the third uh, and you know she doesn't really like the wet and I, I think that might be why the price is what it is but you sometimes find Andrew with these heavy tracks you know the way they drain three days of no rain mm. um, and you actually find that uh, you know, it really just takes that juice out of it. And, and some of these horses that don't usually handle the wet, you know, it, it actually ends up being okay for them. So um, if it's not too wet, uh, you know, Vangelic's just a, an amazing price at the moment. Then, you know, you mentioned the two Walla three-year-olds, uh, the Phillies hinged, you know, she was really strong winning the, the surround stakes. Um, and, and we sort of mentioned her in the, on the call a couple of weeks ago at double figure odds. Um, Espiona's a, a really highly talented filly as well. She's only having a fifth start, uh, and I think she'll be much better on a dry track. But, um, you know, she has to be considered a chance too. And, uh, you know, Lighthouse sort of eighth up off a seven-day backup. It's not, it's not the usual sort of profile here, but if there's one stable that can do the, the sort of things that uh, aren't mm -hmm. the norm, it's, it's the Ma Eustace camp. We've seen that with, with a yeah. Totsu. So, uh, <laughs> um, you know, it's an interesting race, but I think there's certainly some value around Vangelic and Hinge in particular. Righto. Well, Vangelic is 21 and 450 right now at Bet365 and Hinged 750 and 260. And as we know, Espiona is the favourite in the race uh, going here at $4.20. Anything else from a Sydney point of view? I mean, it's the last chance, isn't it, for the two-year-olds? Uh, do you think there's anything in the Magic Knight or the Pago Pago that could push them already in the slipper? Uh, it's, 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 it's been really tough to assess the slipper this year, to be honest, just with, with all of the rain, that you know, the, the heavy 10. Um, you know, I do a lot of work, obviously, on the trials, but, but they haven't trialled a lot on on this sort of heavy 10. Mm. Um, you know, I think Queen of the Ball um, is one who's, uh, you know, been been pretty impressive. Um, it'll be interesting to see see her take her place in, in the Magic Knight. Uh, in the Pago Pago, um, you know, do have a bit of time for, for Rise of the Masses, but um, you know, I think it's going to be a really interesting slipper. And, and to be honest, there's there, there's nothing that in the slipper, even you know, the likes of, of Cool and Gather and uh, Best of Bordeaux and some of the horses that people are talking about. There, there's nothing that's that's standing out to me as as, as a, a real certainty. And um, you know, it also depends how the weather plays. You know, we sort of saw yeah. uh, in some of the heavy track races previously some some roughies win. Um, like the, the the Godolphin horse at sort of thirty to one that year, and, and sometimes if the track's really heavy, the horses that back up off this race into that race actually have a big advantage. Um, so it, it's very hard to give you a definitive answer, Andrew. I think yeah. the weather's going to play a big part in this, and and the two year olds is just isn't an outstanding two year old to be honest this year. Maybe it is revolutionary, Miss uh, doing the double the filly. Who knows that three weeks from the uh, Blue Diamond into the Golden Slipper? So much intrigue. You can get more information by going to winningedgeinvestments dot com. It's tips, it's ratings from professional putters throughout this autumn carnival. Gamble responsibly. Call one eight hundred eight five eight eight five eight. Good to chat to you, Dean. We'll do it again next week. Thanks, Andrew. Great to chat, and yeah, enjoy another. Uh... Another Saturday of just outstanding racing. Yeah, we will. Uh, Dean Evans from Winning Edge, and he's thinking with this just two or three days of okay weather in Sydney, Vangelic at $21 might be well and truly over the odds. In the Group 1, Coolmore Classic. When my mates bring their plus ones, who bring their plus ones? We're going to need more McNugs delivered. McDelivery! Get dinner delivered with the 40 Chicken McNugger Pack and new spicy sticky barbecue sauce from Macca's. McDelivery available at select locations.